It's not looking good for this one here, the Gold Cup Standard. Science has been out for it for a couple of years and now it looks like they're finally going to kill it. That's right, the standardized cup of coffee that we thought was the scientifically correct way to brew, well, it turns out it has some massive problems. And what does this mean for the coffee industry in general? And if there is a problem with the golden cup, then what's going to replace it? That's exactly what we're going to dive into today. But first, a little bit of background. If you are a quote unquote normal person, then you probably have this vague notion of the golden cup being a certain recipe or coffee to water ratio. If you're looking around online, you'll often see people mention that it's 55 to 60 grams of coffee per liter of water. And while that's a decent definition, coffee professionals have a more technical version, and that is that coffee has to fit in on this chart here. This is called the brew control chart, and as you can see, there are two axes. On the left, there's the one for strength, and on the right, there's the axis for extraction percentage. So that means how much of the coffee that you extract from the beans uh, will actually make it into the brew. So the original gold cup standard was that coffee has to fit exactly into the middle of this chart. And that means that it has a strength between 1.15 to 1.35 TDS and an extraction percentage between 18 to 22 percent. And that actually lines up pretty well with using 55 to 60 grams of coffee per liter. There is a little bit of confusion about who came up with the uh, parts of the chart and uh, brewing recommendations. Many people will say it's uh, Professor Ernest Lockhart, who did a lot of research about uh, coffee in the 50s and 60s. But according to reliable sources, I'll put a link down below, the initial research that gave us that 18 to 22 percent uh, guideline was created in 1957 by the Midwest Research Institute. We actually don't know anything about how the study was done, uh, the design, but it was probably some kind of big survey where they were trying to find out what the preferences were of uh, normal people. So today we have that 18 to 22 percent range, but we don't really know what uh, coffee they used, what grinders, brewing methods, and so on. And we also don't know if uh, people like 18 percent more than uh, 22, if it's better to be completely in the center of the chart or more out towards the side. Today, basically all coffee associations around the world are still basing their recommendations around that uh, original 18 to 22 percent extraction range. And that's the thing that modern science has some issues with. Let's go into the more obvious things that are problematic. So first of all, the brewing chart is mixing up terms that are meant to be more neutral descriptions and also things that are more value judgments. So in modern sensory science, uh, that's really a no-go. The idea that one thing is the best for everybody doesn't really exist in uh, modern food science. Second, it also implies that there is a perfect range uh, in the square and if you go a little bit outside of it, then suddenly you're in some uh, very bad territory. So let's say you're here on the brew control chart. You made a pretty strong coffee that is not quite reaching the 18% extraction. Well, according to the brew chart, you underdeveloped the uh, coffee. And if you're brewing a kind of modern uh, coffee competition recipe, there's actually a pretty good chance that you're going to be off uh, a little bit off that square. At the same time, the chart actually doesn't tell us about what's going on in between the 18 and 22 percent. Could it be that some spot is better between these two? Uh, should you be in the middle? Well, we don't really know it. And if you've ever been brewing coffee and you played around with a refractometer and measured extraction, you know there's a pretty big difference between uh, these two extremes. So these are the types of criticism that have been leveled at the brewing control chart. The gold cup is pretty much built on this very chart here. So if there's a problem with the chart, then there's a problem with the golden cup. Now the next question is how is science actually going to kill this standard? Well, over the last few years, a couple of really interesting studies have been published uh, by the UC Davis Coffee Center. And this is, as the name indicates, a coffee lab under the University of California. And it's the main place where coffee science is done in the US. So it's not just some random PhD project. The first paper that was published about the brew control chart was released back in 2020. 
and I wonder why there wasn't more talk about it back then. I guess the whole world was probably busy worrying about getting wiped out by some new virus. Or maybe they were stuck at home just making Dalgona coffee, I can't really tell. But if you read between the lines and look beyond the academic title of the research, you quickly get the point. Consumer preferences for black coffee are spread over a wide range of brew strengths and extraction yields. So in this study, what they did was actually go back and do that kind of research that would be similar to what uh, Professor Lockhart and the other people might have been doing in 1957. And it actually comes to some pretty different conclusions. As the title suggests, the consumers like extraction yields at a wider range than previously thought. So if this is true, then it means that the original brew control chart is inaccurate. And the researchers are not really hiding that they think that is the case. Here you can see the conclusion. Practical application. This research informs the way coffee brewers manipulate brew strengths and extraction of drip brew coffee for optimal consumer acceptance and justifies a reform of the standard coffee brewing chart in its representation of an ideal coffee as we uncover two consumer preference segments with different positive and negative sensory drivers of liking. So that was 2020, but now the same scientists are back with some uh, new research and they actually suggest a new brew control chart. And this is really interesting stuff. So the new chart is built up of two very interesting ideas that tries to tell us a bit more about what extraction percentage and strength is doing to the perception of the coffee. So instead of saying uh, underdeveloped or better, it tries to say what the coffee actually tastes like. And what they also found out was uh, that uh, if you take a big group of people and uh, analyze their coffee preferences, then naturally they are going to uh, divide themselves into two pretty different clusters. So if you want the best coffee for the most people, you shouldn't just take an average of these two groups because that's going to make uh, both groups a little bit unhappy. They would be more satisfied if you could make a coffee that was specifically tailored to their preferences. So this gives us some completely different uh, brew charts that we can navigate and uh, tailor our brew after. The first one shows how different flavor attributes in coffee uh, typically represent themselves at the different strengths and extraction levels. And this was actually quite interesting for me to see because it kind of vindicates that competition style of brewing where people would typically go a little bit stronger and lower on the extraction to get those more like popping flavors. Uh, and as you can see here, the flavor descriptors that are most positive are around that uh, part of the square. So notes like berry, citrus, these are things that most people would say are good descriptors in coffee. And apparently, according to science, you need to be in that 140 range uh, at a pretty low extraction to get uh, most of those types of flavor notes. In the paper, there's also a new chart called the New Consumer Brewing Control Chart. So this chart uh, basically tries to show that there are two quite different groups of uh, coffee drinkers. They call them uh, cluster one and cluster two, and then it maps them to specific subsections of the brewing control chart. And what all this shows is that cluster one doesn't really like overly bitter sour coffee, they prefer a lower TDS and a medium extraction percentage. Cluster 2 is the more extreme group of coffee people and they can actually drink very different coffees. So they both like uh, medium TDS with low extractions and high extractions at the same time. The authors behind the paper actually uh, speculate that the Cluster 2 is actually comprised of the more experienced coffee drinkers. Uh, let me just read what they say. The second preference segment liked equally coffees with acid, sour, citrus, berry, and dried fruit sensory attributes on the one hand, all coffees with roasted, burned, ash, thick, and black tea sensory attributes on the other hand. This was unexpected and may seem odd, but it occurs to us that those areas of the BCC match the flavor profiles of high quality specialty coffees and typical espresso blends respectively, and may speak to a preference segment of more experienced and neophilic coffee drinkers who were familiar with a broader range of coffees. I have to admit, I had to look up the word neophilic. I just really love the sound and feeling of it. Maybe instead of the weird coffee person, we have to coin the phrase neophilic coffee person instead. I feel like, yeah, there's some potential in that word. Anyway, now let's get to what we have all been waiting for, and that is the new brew control chart. I have to say, I really like this. It's paying respect to the original brew control chart it's easy to read and understand, but all these squares that were no-go zones before are now suddenly cool areas that you can visit. 
that sour citrus place, high TDS, low extraction. I think many people like to go there, but they weren't really uh, comfortable because it's uh, outside that classic standard zone. But now it's suddenly okay to try it out. So I think this is just a quite fascinating study and kudos to the researchers who have done all this work. It seems like a huge undertaking. And I suggest you read the papers to check out some of the interviews with the people behind them. I'll leave uh, links down in the description below so uh, you can check them out. There are some good YouTube videos. But for me, the main takeaway is that people in the coffee industry are often uh, too dogmatic about a lot of stuff. We take something that we think is scientific and then we make some very strict rules about it. For example, saying that 15 to 17% extraction yield is really bad or that bypass water is uh, ruining your coffee. I think if you ask an actual scientist, they will just research the mechanics of different things and then what's better from a taste perspective, well, that's not really their domain. So just an example of where this is hurting the coffee industry. I think often when I go to coffee shops, uh, I will uh, taste the filter coffee and the espresso and often the espresso will be way too strong and at the same time the filter coffee will be too weak. And I think that's because maybe they follow that golden ratio a little bit too literally and the same with that uh, one to two ratio that's quite popular with espresso. These things tend to carry a lot of weight. I'm pretty sure if we actually surveyed most customers, they would uh, prefer much longer shots. So I think for the coffee industry, this is also a good occasion to start talking about all these things again. TDS, can we make stronger coffee? Can we extract in different ways? Are there certain brewing methods that will taste better if you do it a certain way? So I'm also curious about what you think. Uh, has this changed for you? How you perceive TDS and extraction? Do you have any preferences? Uh, let me know down in the comment section. Oh, and by the way, if you like to shake things up and uh, brew in unconventional ways, then uh, I found a pretty cool way to brew the French press to get a taste unlike a regular French press just by breaking a few old school rules. So if you're curious about something like that, then I'll leave that video here and then you can just click it and then I'll see you over there.